Good to see you, church. I'm so excited, so faith-filled to be with you here today. Obviously, I wish you know that it was under a little bit uh, different circumstances. I love the time that I get to spend uh, at home with you guys. You are definitely still my church home. I think about you every single week, every single Sunday. Dad and I get together in the morning, pray and worship and believe and intercede for you. Uh, knowing that God's going to move, knowing that He's going to do things, uh, uh, and I'm just super excited any time that I get the opportunity to talk about my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So even though it looks different, even though it feels different, it might sound different, uh, I'm still humbled and honored to be here with you today. Give you a, a quick update on Emily and I. Obviously, spoiler alert, I'm in Kentucky, not in New York City anymore. My office, we shut down for the foreseeable future. Emily is shut down. Uh, as, as you know, she's teaching first grade in Brooklyn. Uh, they're out until April 20th as it sits right now. Um, and, you know, rumblings that they might not go back to school in New York City as, as New York seems like it's kind of the epicenter for COVID-19 here in the United States. Um, so we fled, came back uh, to, to, be, to be home, to be with family to be with our loved ones, uh, and a little byproduct of that, you get a little bit of me uh, today. So again, humbled and honored to be here. We're doing good. Everybody's safe. Everybody's healthy. Uh, and, and I just want to encourage you today. I have, I have no agenda. I have no message. Uh, I have my sword. I have my, my armor. I have this, which is sharper than any two-edged sword. It is alive and well today just as it was yesterday, just as it was before this virus broke out, and just as it will be when, this, uh, when everything gets straightened up and cleared up. So I'm just coming here to encourage you, to uplift you. I understand and know this is fearful times. A lot's going on. Things are changing each and every day. Yesterday looked different than the day before, and tomorrow's going to look different than today. But all the Every single thing that I turn on, if, whether it's, it's, it's Pastor Barry or whether it's Jensen Franklin, Robert Morris, Stephen Furtick, Carl Lentz, everybody's saying the same thing. And I don't think that's a cliche. I don't think that it's happenstance. I don't think that it just, you know, just happens that they're all. It's faith over fear. We don't have to fear the same things that the world fears. We have the answer. We have God's truth. He's our healer. He's our sustainer. We can stand on the word of God. Everything that he says is true. God says in 2 Timothy 1.7, I didn't give you a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and and of a sound mind. That's not just something to repeat. That's not just an old thing to say. Oh, that is truth. That is a fact. God didn't give us a spirit of fear. Genesis 50, 20, what the enemy intended for evil, God intended for good. What is now being done? The saving of many lives. You could say, what's good's coming of this? What is good that God's working? Let me tell you, let me tell you what I see from 30,000 feet away. I see that yes, the brick and mortar body of Christ, the brick and mortar, the building might be shut down. But just think for one second, we did not, this, this virus did not catch our God off guard. This didn't catch him at a slumber. I think back when Elijah was making fun of the prophets and he said, is your God asleep? Uh, you know, wake your God up, scream a little bit louder, bang the drum a little bit. Our God never slumbers, never sleeps. This did not catch him off guard. What if, what if, Churches like Henry Christian had the ability to go direct to the consumer, had the ability to go direct to their body of believers. Now, because of these, and they would hate me if I did this, but unbelievable soldiers, Amy and Troy Yunt, who are doing what they've never done before. Look at how amazing this looks. Look at how amazing this is, how it sounds. This doesn't just happen right? A lot of people think, oh, well, church shut down and now we're going to be online. It is because we have warriors that are dedicating and sacrificing their time and picking up the banner, picking up the standard and moving it forward and championing our efforts. This is amazing. We're going 
on Facebook Live. It's on Twitter. It's on YouTube. Uh, Hillsong in in the Northeast. They've never they've never had the capability. They've never done this before. Now they're streaming. Jensen streaming. Robert. All these churches how now have the ability and are equipped to do what they've never done before, to reach folks that they've never reached before. Does that sound like something that the enemy intended for evil, but God intended it for good? Romans 8, 28, we know that all things are working together for our good to those that have been called according to His purposes. So God's going to use this. Yes, God's going to use us. God's going to, I'm believing and I'm praying each and every night How special it is that we get to come. And now that I'm back in Kentucky, I'm joining with you all every single night at 9 p.m. Believing that God's going to show up. Expecting Him to move. Desperate for His presence. Filled with faith. Knowing that He's going to answer our prayer. That He's going to hear His people's call and answer their prayer. We're coming together at nine and I'm believing that hundreds of thousands and millions of people that a revival is going to break out in the United States, that hundreds of thousands and millions of people are going to be able to say, I came to Christ. I came to the Lord during the Corona crisis. I came to the, what that is Genesis 50, 20 at work right now, 2020 in our lives. So I came today to bring encouragement. I hope you can feel my faith. I hope you can, I hope you can feel the passion uh, that I have, that I always come with. Ain't nothing changed. It is the same. Hebrews 13, 8. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. So what I want to do today, I want to have story time with Ed. I want to crack our books. I want to get up into the Bible, read some scriptures, uh, a word that I feel that God put on my heart. I get so excited thinking about this story that we're about to go over. I, I want to say that it's one of my top five favorite Old Testament stories, but if I was to be honest, I don't know how it couldn't be my favorite Old Testament story because it has nothing to do with the people and everything to do with God. I feel like we couldn't be in a more, this couldn't be a more opportune, right time word for the day that we're facing, the adversity that we're facing right now. Our leaders have said that we're at war. We are at war. The coronavirus is waging war on us. The only difference is than World War II and World War I or 9-11, we're facing a battle and an army that we cannot see. So what do you do if you're facing an army and a battle? You know, the odds are stacked against you. You're facing something that you cannot see. How do you? We go to the word. We stand on God's promises. We believe that he is who he says he is. So if you would, uh, turn with me to 2 Chronicles chapter 20. 2 Chronicles chapter 20. I hope. I can get through this because I literally get so juiced reading this story. It is unbelievable. Second Chronicles chapter 20. My title says, Jehoshaphat defeats Moab and Ammon. Verse 1. After this, the Moabites and Ammonites with some of the Meunites came to wage war against Jehoshaphat. Try to put yourself as we're reading this, into the shoes of, right? Like, it's still alive, it's still well. Let this speak to you today. So, after this, the Moabites and Ammonites with some of the Meunites came to wage war against Jehoshaphat. Coronavirus has come to wage war against the United States. Some men came in Jehoshaphat. Jehoshaphat was king at the time. A vast army is coming against you from Edom, from the other side of the sea, right? It came over across from Asia into the, I just want you to be able to to picture yourself in this. A vast army is coming against you from Edom, from other side of the sea. It is already in Hazan Tamar, that is in Gedi. Alarmed, naturally, Jehoshaphat resolved to inquire of the Lord. The first thing that Jehoshaphat does, the first thing that the king did was inquire of, of the Lord. That's a good king. He proclaimed a fast for all of Judah. How amazing is it that the President of the United States declared a national day of prayer 
I don't care what your political beliefs are. This has this this coronavirus isn't a, a partisan issue. It is affecting each and every one of us. So whether you're a Democrat, whether you're a Republican, an independent, it doesn't matter. When the president of the United States gives Christians like he's challenging us. He's saying, I'm giving a national day of prayer. That gives that fires me up. That gives us the ability to go and approach the throne room of grace, to approach our intercessor and say, God, we're pleading, we're believing. Second Chronicles 7:14 says, If my people who will humble themselves, call by my name, I'll answer you. I'll respond. I'll hear you from heaven. He's given us that ability. He's putting us on blast to put our God on blast to give him a platform to do what only he can do. Jehoshaphat resolved to inquire of the Lord and he proclaimed a fast for all of Judah. The people of Judah came together to seek help from the Lord. Indeed, they came from every town in Judah to seek him. Each and every town, each and every city, each and every state now Shout out to West Virginia for being the last one to hold off. Must have been eating the mud pies and drinking the moonshine that kept them to be the last state that got a case for so long. But now every single city, every single state in the union has been affected one way or another by the coronavirus. So every single, all the churches are mobilizing. All of our pastors are mobilizing. All of our believers are. Jehoshaphat stood up in the assembly of Judah in Jerusalem at the temple of the Lord in front of the new courtyard and said, O Lord, God of our fathers, are you not the God who is in heaven? You rule over all the kingdoms of the nation. You rule over the United States. You rule over China. You rule over the UK. Power and might are in your hand, and no one, no coronavirus, no nothing can withstand you. O our God. Did you not drive out the inhabitants of this land before your people Israel? Meaning, he's telling him, you've delivered us before. You've delivered us from Ebola. You've delivered us from the swine flu. You've delivered us again and again and again and again. We're coming to you today believing that you'll do it again. Oh, our God, did you not drive out the inhabitants of your land? Give it forever to the descendants of Abraham, your friend. They have lived in it and have built in it a sanctuary for your name, saying, if calamity comes upon us, whether the sword of judgment or plague or famine, we will stand in your presence before the temple that bears your name and will cry out to you in our distress and you will hear us and save us. But, but Ed, I, I can't, we can't come to the temple that bears her name. Oh, don't forget, we're living under the new covenant. The same Jesus that raised from the dead, when that curtain split from top to bottom, he now dwells inside of us. We are the temple. We can go to the temple day and night, every minute, every second, every hour, and confess that God is good and he's in control. We will stand here in the temple that bears your name. We will cry out in distress and you will hear us and you'll save us. It was true then, and it's true now. Here are men from Amnon, Moab, Mount Seir, whose territory you would not allow Israel to invade when they came from Egypt, so they turned away from them and did not destroy them. See how they are repaying us by coming to drive us out of this possession you gave us as an inheritance. O oh, our God, will you not judge them? For we have no power to face this vast army that is attacking us. We do not know what to do, but our eyes are on you, God, we don't know what to do, but our eyes are on you. All the men of Judah, with their wives and with their children and with their little ones, stood there before the Lord every night at 9 p.m. Your pastor has challenged you to get with your family, to get with your children, to stand and declare and proclaim before the Lord. Then the Spirit of the Lord. Then the Spirit of the Lord. So right, something happened. They responded, and because of their faith-filled response, God had no choice 
but to show up. He had no choice but to respond. The spirit of the Lord came upon Jehaziel, son of Zechariah, the son of Benaniah, the son of Jahiel, the son of Mattaniah, a Levite and descendant of Astaph, and he stood in the assembly. Yes, you can be impressed because I just said all those names. Yes, you can be impressed. I'm, I'm messing around. I hope that that translates as you're viewing it at home. He said, listen, listen, King Jehoshaphat. Listen, President Trump. Listen, person that lives in eminence. Listen, all who live in Judah and Jerusalem. This is what the Lord says to you. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged because of this vast army. For the battle is not yours. The battle is God's. The battle is not yours. The battle is God's. What do you do? When you're fighting an army that you can't see, we as Christians can give it to God. His yoke is easy and his burden is light. The battle is not ours. The battle is God's. Don't feel overwhelmed. Don't feel like you can't do anything. Don't feel like you're trapped. The battle isn't yours. The battle is God's. Tomorrow, march down against them. He... he, just, just to be clear, he didn't say, stay in your room, get in bed, get under the covers, the battle's yours, I got you. No, he said, get up, get out of bed, and go march down against them. They'll be climbing up to the pass of Ziz, and you'll find them at the end of the gorge in the desert of Jaruel. You'll not have to fight this battle. Take up your position, stand firm, and see the deliverance the Lord will give you, O oh, Judah, in Jerusalem. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. Go out to face them and the Lord will be with you. How much more powerful do you think it was for the body of believers that went out to the battle and saw the battle being fought and won on their behalf versus the folks that stayed at home and the folks that came back and told them about. I want to be we want to be the type of people that are out coming back telling the story of the victory that we've seen, that we've saw. It, we, just in talking here today, there's been miracle after miracle. Folks are feeling better. Jobs are coming back. Like, things are happening. Things are changing. Do you want to be told about those things or do you want to be the people telling the people about those things? Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. Jehoshaphat bowed with his face to the ground. All the people of Judah and Jerusalem fell down in worship before the Lord. Then some Levites from the Kohathites and the Korahites stood up and praised the Lord, the God of Israel, with a very loud voice. Early in the morning they left for the desert of Tekoa. As they set out, Jehoshaphat stood and said, listen to me, Judah, people of Jerusalem, have faith in the Lord your God and you will be upheld. Have faith in his prophets and you will be successful. After consulting the people, Jehoshaphat appointed men to sing to the Lord and to praise him for the splendor of his holiness as they went out ahead of the army. So as they're going to fight a battle, Jehoshaphat the king says, before we even get there, come on, before we even get to the battle, let's be praising and singing. Something changes when we praise the name of God. Things begin to shift. The enemy begins to flee. Fear begins to dissipate. The dead begin to rise. Hope begins to rise. The air changes. Our soul gets rearranged. The sun shines brighter when we praise the name of the Lord. As they're heading into their battle, as they're going to face the army, Jehoshaphat says, let's praise God for his holiness. Let's acknowledge who he is. Let's sing about how our, could you imagine being the enemy, being the people that are the four armies that are all stacked up to whoop this little lame Israelite. Could you imagine as the enemy, as media is selling you fear, as your friends are afraid, as everything that you turn on, it, fear, fear. Could you imagine if you just started speaking peace, if you just started speaking life, if you just started claiming the name that is above every other name, the all-sufficient God, could you imagine 
what might happen if every day when somebody calls you and tries to sell you fear, that you sell them peace, that you sell them life, that you sell them the hope that we have in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He said, go out and sing, give thanks to the Lord for His love endures forever. I like to think and imagine that Michael W. Smith was out in front of the give thanks to the Lord, our God and King. I like to think that he's just dr- beating the drum, that the shofar, doo, 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 they're coming over the hills, coming over, and that's all that the enemy hears. Give thanks to the Lord. His love endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord. His love endures forever. No matter how many times you say it, no matter how many times you hear it, it's true. Give thanks to the Lord for his love endures forever. As they began to sing, not after, they, not after they've been fighting for a week, not after they've been, as they began to sing and praise the Lord, he set ambushes against the men of Amnon, Moab, and Mount Seir who were invading Judah. God flattened the curve. He stopped the spread of the coronavirus in the name of Jesus. As we begin to praise, when faith speaks, Heaven responds. The men of Amnon and Moab rose up against the men from Mount... Whoa, 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 whoa. The men of Amnon, Moab, rose up against the men of Mount Seir. Just a minute ago, they were on the same team. Now they're fighting each other and killing each other to destroy and annihilate them. After they finished slaughtering each other, the men from Seir, they helped destroy one another. When the men of Judah came to the place that overlooks the dead, so they hadn't even got up to see... Their enemy, remember we can't see our enemy, but it didn't change. It didn't change the proclamation of God. It didn't change who he was. It didn't change how they attacked this, even though they couldn't see it. They were singing and praising and worshiping. When they came to the place that overlooks the desert and looked toward the vast army, they saw only dead bodies lying on the ground. Not a single person had escaped. So Jehoshaphat and his men went to carry off the plunder Whoa, whoa, whoa. God exceeds the need. I do believe that. I think that that's right then. I think that that's right now. God exceeds the need. Not only did he defeat the Moabites, not only did he defeat the Ammonites, not only is he going to defeat the coronavirus, not only does he meet your need, he then exceeds the need. So after they didn't even fight the battle, but after the battle was won, God gave them plunder, that they could take home. God, get, Do you remember when God freed the Israelites in Egypt? Right? Ten plagues, they are then released. Don't forget that the Egyptians gave them gold, gave them silver, gave them... Tr- he exceeds the need. That's what our God does each and every time. All of his men, they went out to carry the plunder off. They found among a great amount of equipment, clothing, articles of value, more than they could take away. More than they could take away. They couldn't even carry back the plunder that God had for them. There was so much that it took them three days to collect it. I believe, I believe that I'm speaking this out to you and that you receive it. There is going to be a prophetic plunder that God is going to give you, that he's going to give us, that he's going to give his people. We can reap these souls that he's harvesting right now. There's going to be souls. There's going to be financial blessings. There's going to be miracles. There's going to be breakthroughs that if it's going to take three days, three weeks, three months to get back to normal. If you remember back in 9 11. After that happened, the churches were filled those next few weeks. What are we going to do? How are we going to respond? How how are we going to... On the fourth day, they assembled in the valley of Barakah where they praised the Lord. This is why it is called the valley of Barakah to this day. Then, led by Jehoshaphat, all the men of Judah and Jerusalem returned joyfully to Jerusalem, for the Lord had given them cause to rejoice over their enemies. They entered Jerusalem and went to the temple of the Lord with harps, with flutes, with trumpets. The fear of God, the fear of God, this is what we're talking about, the fear of God came upon all the kingdoms of the countries when they had heard how the Lord had fought against the enemies of Israel and the kingdom of Jehoshaphat was at peace for his God had given him rest on every side. How many of us need that rest that only God can give? 
that rests from every side. You got stress coming at you from work. You got stress being at home. You got stress from your kids. You got God gives us that peace that passes all understanding. He's the only one who can provide rest from every side. They came back after the battle was won, praising, acknowledging God for who he was. In case you forgot who God is. In case you forgot who your God, the God that you serve is, he's the God that exceeds the need. He's the advocate. He's the almighty. He's the ancient of days. He's the beginning. He's the begotten. He's the beloved of God. He's the chief shepherd. He's the counselor. He's the consolation of Israel. He's the God of all comfort. He's the day spring. He's the day star. He's the desire of all nation. He's the elect. He's from everlasting to everlasting. He's the eternal one. He's the firstborn. He's the first fruits. He's the friend of all sinners. He's the flawless father. He's the God with us. He's the great teacher. He's the great high priest. He's the giving God. He's the head of the church. He's heir to all things. He's the hope of glory. He's the I am that I am. He's the judge of the living and he's the judge of the dead. He's the just God. He's the king of kings. He's the light. He's the life. He's the living stone. He's the Lord of lords. He's the meditator. He's the Messiah. He's the man of sorrows. He's the good thing out of Nazareth. He's the name above every other name. He's the overcoming lamb. He's the omnipotent God, the omnipresent God, the omniscient God. God, the omnibenevolent God. He's the Passover. He's the peace. He's the prince of God. He's the quintessential savior. He's our rabbi. He's the redeemer. He's our ransom. That's who he is. He's the star of Jacob. He's the son of man. He's the son of God. He's the truth. He's the true vine. And he's the tree of life. He's the unspeakable gift of God. He's our victor. He's the very voice of God. He's the very Christ. He's the way. He's the word. He's the wonderful. He's extremely gracious. He's Yahweh. He's Yeshua. He's the zealous worker. He's the alpha and he's the omega. He's the beginning and the end. He's a husband to the widow. He's a father to the orphan. He's a bright and morning star. He's the lily of the valley. He's the rose of Sharon. He's the honey in the rock. He's the staff of life, the pearl of great price, the rock in the weary land. He's the prince of peace, the savior of every man's soul. He's Adam's creator. He's Eve's promised seed. He's Abel's sacrifice. He's Enoch's faithful companion. He's Methuselah's old age. He's Noah's ark and rainbow. He's Abraham's ram in the bush. He's Isaac's substitute and well. He's Jacob's wrestler and ladder. He's he's Joseph's favor. He's Moses' staff. He's Aaron's rod that budded the Israelites' manna and quail. He's Joshua's courage. He's Caleb's allotment. He's Gideon's fleece. He's Sansom's strength. He's Ruth's harvest. He's David's horn of oil. He's David's slingshot, Deborah's song, Solomon's wisdom, Elijah's mantle and raven, the widow's oil, Elisha's double portion. He's Naaman's new skin. He's Isaiah's righteous servant and sundial. He's Jeremiah's righteous branch. He's Ezekiel's man of fire, and he's the God that exceeds the need. He's Daniel's vision. He's Hosea's faithful husband. He's Esther's timing. He's Job's restorer of the wasted years. He's Hezekiah's healing. He's Josiah's reformer. He's Jonah's leafy plant. He's Malachi's day star from on high. He's Matthew's Messiah. He's Mark's miracle worker. He's Luke's son of man. And he's John's son of God. He's Peter's shadow. He's the rock to the keys of the kingdom. He's Paul's a hand the potter and the power over the clay. In Revelation, he's the one who was dead and is now alive. He's king over death and king over hell. He's above everything, so you can't lift him up. He's beneath everything, so you can't put him down. He's inside everything, so you can't lock him out. And he's outside everything, so you can't put him out. He's Elohim. He's my creator. He's El Shaddai, the God Almighty. He's El Roi, the God that sees ahead. He's Adonai, 
the Lord, my master. He's Jehovah Sabaoth, the Lord of hosts. He's Jehovah Mikadesh, my sanctifier. He's Jehovah Ra, my shepherd. He's Jehovah Shama, our fellowship. He's Jehovah Shalom, our peace. He's Jehovah Nissi, my conqueror. And he's Jehovah Sidkenu, my righteousness. He's Jehovah Rapha, my healer. And he's Jehovah Jireh, my provider. That's something to take home with you today. His name is Jesus. He wants you to understand that in that name, he exceeds your every need. Give God praise wherever you're at. We are talking about a man named Jesus. There's power in the name of of Jesus. There's power to break every chain, every stronghold, every addiction, everything in the name of Jesus. Jesus above the corona crisis. Jesus above COVID-19. Thank you, church. Love you. Praying for you. Hello, family and friends. So glad you were able to join us today for our message. We pray that you felt the love the encouragement, the hope, and the strength of Jesus Christ today. We love you, and we care about you. If you've not made a commitment of your life to Christ and want to, would you pray this prayer with me today? Yeah, pray this prayer with me today, would you? Say this out loud. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, that's right. Would you come into my heart? Would you forgive me of my sins? Would you empower me to be the man or the woman of God that you've called me to be? Help me, Lord, today to live a life that would honor you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, if you've made a commitment of your life to Christ today, we'd like to hear from you. Or if you have a prayer request, You can contact our church office. You can call the church office at 502-845-4728. You can visit our website, which is henrychristian.com. We can also be found on Facebook, YouTube, or Twitter. Just look for Henry Christian Church. God bless you, and we'll see you next time.